Welcome to the Re-Review Podcast, where we watch movies from our past with a perspective from today. Your hosts are Matt, Bobby, and Austin, and we have an immense love for the films of our youth, so we're taking a look back to see if they still hold up. Each week, one person chooses a movie, and for this week, we'll be discussing the movie Idiocracy. It was released in 2006, directed by Mike Judge, and stars Luke Wilson, Maya Rudolph, and Dax Shepard. It's a movie that tells a tale of a future dystopia where the world's brightest and best are actually not that bright. This is a fair warning. We are spoiling a 15-year-old movie, so if you haven't seen it, we will be revealing key plot points, amongst other things. So Matt chose the movie this week, so he's going to tell us how he felt about it. So I picked this movie uh, not not as much based off nostalgia because it's not as old as some of the movies we've watched before. Um, I feel like the movie became almost a talking point for people, a a conversation point about what was going on in society, you know, almost like the Jerry Springer-ness of what was going on in the world, Um, almost to the point where it became, you know, anachronous for uh, you know, uh, maybe even like, you know, that particular political, uh, uh, area that was going on. Um, so I feel like that's the main reason why I chose it and just kind of get a sense of how well it has aged. Um, and for a 15 year old movie, it has not aged well. I can say that now. Um, (laughs) it is, uh, okay. I'll say what I did like about the movie. I thought the performances for the most part were good. Um, I think that the the simplicity of the story made it for the most part tolerable for the brief 84 minute runtime. Um, it did not feel like it dragged, which I can't say for some other movies. I'll say we all agree that runtime is kind of a plus in a weird way. Maybe because in the year 2021, we have short attention spans, but it was done really fast. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, definitely like the run span. You know, it was over quick. It didn't, you know, it, it never really stopped for too long. I don't think that the movie was trying to take itself too seriously. I never felt that. Um, and so it was funny in areas. Some things I, you know, were a bit harder to watch, especially in 2021. Um, very hard to watch and hear. There were some words I kind of wish weren't in this movie. Um, I do, I do like its its commentary on commercialism, marketing. Um, I think that those things have only become more relevant in this day and age. It you know, almost as a physical manifestation of a pop-up ad, um, the, the entire world for the most part. Um, as far as things that I didn't like, uh, I, ooh, like I said, some of the, some of the stuff didn't age well and it hurt to watch. Um, it, I don't see how this could ever air on TV, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> At the very least, there's entire sections that we could, I don't, you know, I don't even know if I could even see this on a Comedy Central or something like that. This, at best, this would be on a paid cable channel and that'd be about it. Mm-hmm. Um, this wouldn't, this wouldn't be on just standard network stuff. Um, yeah. I, I mean, if, if I can follow suit here in terms of talking about the, the themes and how it, in a sense, I have to agree, applies to the, today. I don't think what the movie presents is um, necessarily uh, lost on the way we live in our society today, especially as you mentioned with pop-up ads, the way we consume content on the internet. You go onto YouTube and you are just inundated with ad after ad when you're trying to consume content, and let alone uh, you know looking at one of the very early shots of Dak Shepard's living room where he's got essentially one big monitor but on his big monitor he's got a million windows open this is how we exist in in the world today so it it sadly feels familiar and in 2006 that's pre-iphone still right so 
it was a different world back then. And it actually is a bit poignant in terms of, of just kind of looking at how life was going. And yes, from a political climate, the world kind of feels the same way today <laughs> with the decisions that people are making and how it affects everyone li- everyone's life and, and how big corporations um, really do rule the roost in places where ideally they wouldn't and they affect society in ways that we, we wouldn't want to. So great, this is, we just did a deep dive and it's probably exactly what Mike Judge wanted. With that said, I, I didn't need it like this. <laughs> Not to make a Matrix reference, but like I was, I, I, you know, there were points that I laughed and, and, and agree with you, but because of that different time, 2006, you know, use whatever terminology you want to, to use for how we look at things today. Um, you know, the we get to the first scene where there's already the moment with um, with the military officer who became friends with a pimp and is, is showing his escapades of, of doing that. And they cut that off. And, that you know, I was laughing and I was going, okay, this is silly and fun. But then we get to the pivotal scene of our main characters being put into cryo, uh, and all of a sudden the the scientist walks in and drops an N bomb, and I just went, what just happened? And it and it happened so early in the movie that it couldn't not set the tone. Where you're like, I get it. This is under the guise of comedy, and we do a lot of things under the guise of comedy for for better or worse. And uh, they were just uh, uh, the overall running theme after that point was whether or not the F word could be said any more than it was said. So um, there's just a, there's almost like a pain point for me where it, it is different. These are different times. I don't, you know, I think we discussed uh, prior to getting on here about it was a very limited release. I don't know what the 2006 reaction to this was. Um, you know, sounds like they made their money back, but there's probably a reason this wasn't, uh, you know, an Oscar winner <laughs> for that year. It it definitely didn't make the money back because I think the budget was something between two and four million dollars, and only made like under half a million, I think, oh, or something okay. like that. They wow. they some somebody at 20th Century Fox definitely watched this and they're like, oh, we approve this. Um, I know that this movie has kind of had somewhat of a cult following um in in recent years uh and i think it's because there are enough uh um gaps in it that you can kind of look at it and compare it to modern times no matter when that is right and say yeah our politicians are idiots yeah people are dumb and yeah you know uh the the big companies are in control of everything and yeah you know, Carl's Jr. has a hamburger that has hot dogs and chips on top of it. And that is something that is a thing. And, you know, yeah, there's a chance that people would probably use Gatorade to water their plants, you know. And so I think that there's enough in there that you potentially could, you know, until we get to that utopian future where, you know, wizards wear shorts and fly on hover cars, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're, <laughs> you can still keep applying it to modern times. Um, I can very easily see how this probably had a hard time with reviewers and probably people in the test screening where uh, somebody definitely got offended watching it, almost implying that people who are less intelligent, you know, it was a bad thing that they inherited the earth almost. And I guess in a, even pre-social media mm-hmm. world that probably didn't go over too well with some people. What do they call them? The like evolutionarily disadvantaged or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I definitely agree with some of those points. I mean, I think that definitely they were t- trying to drive home about marketing and advertising where I mean, if you are what you eat, it's you are what you see and you read and you consume. And, you know, they just verbatim just spit out what they saw all the time, you know, which is like, oh, you know, it has electrolytes. It's good for you. Well, no one really knows what electrolytes are in this, you know, not even the guys who are smart, you know. And and it, it was interesting because all the clothes that they wore were just covered in ads and 
the screens that they saw were all just covered in ads and there was definitely like a pandering to the lowest denominator the lowest denominator in there which was interesting but it was like pretty pervasive and after a and after a time it's like okay we get this and you know if if we didn't there was just so much of it and if we don't want it like okay like what's it trying to say what's the story trying to say is it like okay if we don't we don't like the way the future is you know that's what they say is in the movie is okay try not to let it happen by reading and informing yourself and trying to take action and all that kind of stuff so i thought that was a really interesting idea i thought it was really interesting i thought some of it was pretty clever but yeah like it did it did it did seem to be like a, a little bit of a one tick joke quite a lot kind of grating at points just to have it but remind us of that so so much because you're right it was i, I very feel like that was the point though house, like at some point it, it definitely is the point, but maybe it is that sort of that Beavis and Butthead logic, sort of the, this is something that I put in front of people in 2006 or here in 2021 to drill down on the lowest base, you know, uh, of how how humanity could potentially be and then just punch you in the face with it just to tell you to read a book. Yeah, I mean, okay. the, the, the irony is, is that this is a movie right it's the same media that they're saying like oh be careful about how much you consume of this they're trying to tell you what don't watch so many movies in the context of a movie it was like, and to be fair i feel like that's what a lot of people have gone back to in in the year since this came out almost like a see this is what happens when uh you know dumb people control things or dumb people are out there it's almost you know, a, a means of, you know, pointing a finger using this as an example. This is what happens when you get a, you know, ex wrestler as a president, or, you know, this is what happens when you, you know, let this kind of, you know, mentality, I mean, is the opening sequence, right? It's the difference between the, you know, the supposed, you know, smart couple who chooses to delay having children versus, you know, Bubba Joe, or what, what was his name? Uh, uh, chevron or uh, i can't remember what his name was but <laughs> the guy was basically like you know had fifty thousand children or something like that in his family line after it was all said and done you know if it, if anything it might have even that opening sequence might have actually been making more of a claim that somehow the smart people were stupid too you know that somehow their their reasoning which to be fair, even in modern times, 15 years later, is still reasoning why a lot of people don't have children, because it is an expensive thing to do, because, you know, uh, it, it's, you know, uh, potentially a, you know, a hurdle for careers, especially for women, um, where, you know, it prevents them from, you know, staying in the work, you know, workforce or whatever. And so it's almost like, hey, you're being stupid for doing this, but then it's also, this is what happens as a result of it. Like you said, it's like, a, you know, a, a not even a survival of the fittest. It's just a survival of who, you know, who's there the most, basically. And it's funny you mentioned that because I've, I've heard within the last year or two, uh, other people talk about the idea of who is still procreating <laughs> just in our current day and age. And the fact that you're right, a lot of people are delaying having kids and it's usually uh, the more learned and the people who make more money. So when it's the people who are less educated who are having more kids is this movie you know it's essentially what the movie's saying you're gonna eventually get a world because they're gonna raise human beings that are just like them and they eventually are the ones who will take over and like you mentioned the uh the uh caring we'll say caring potentially a couple who thinks i can't have a kid yet because it would be irresponsible well, then they end up in the place that they are where it's like we waited too long. So you're, you're absolutely right. I think he's definitely saying they're just as dumb. Hence why our main protagonist couldn't see that uh, the person he was there with was a hooker. Artist. And, she was an artist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's She'll just get a job at Starbucks. 
CEO. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, now, uh, it's can we also point out the fact that I don't, I don't believe for a second that Starbucks made it all the way to 2505. Like, I don't think that any of these companies would have lasted that long, even with their name changes that occurred over time. But still, it is interesting to see how they, they changed industries as things went on. I don't know. Copyright law keeps getting extended. <laughs> <laughs> certain certain uh, certain mouse house is going to ensure that they exist for eternity. I, they, def they definitely changed uh, public domain law. Well, you know, I will give this movie credit. If for nothing else, they built into the story a way to avoid copyright claims or legal issues with some of these companies by building in the fact that over time people were just so dumb that they just changed the names it allowed them to have names that were close enough to the companies that you knew what it was and so they could make jokes about you know certain companies like i feel like some companies probably were all for you know allowing their their branding to be in this even if it was meant to be a you know, a uh, you know, comedic take, maybe even demeaning on their brand. Oh, you mean like Carl Jr. being okay with a machine that will uh, spray gas in someone's face and knock them out? Like, <laughs> and call an unfit mother? Yes, and call it. Do you really think Carl signed off on that? <laughs> maybe in 2006, Carl Jr. didn't have the legal power that they might have now. <laughs> they weren't scared of them. That's a definite odd thing to uh, to to be. Yeah, it's cool. You're kind of using our identity, but it's all right. You're even though it's malicious. Okay, it's satirical. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, yeah. I think that after watching it again, I don't remember when I first watched this. I'm sure it was probably much after the theatrical release. I don't. I haven't seen the trailer for this, but I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have been in that market when it was unlimited release. Uh, it sounds like it was only in something like a hundred theaters. And I'm sure my small hometown was not one of those chosen. Mm -hmm. um, but watching it again, after at least I'm sure five to 10 years of seeing it for the first time, would I watch it again? Probably not. I think. Yeah. Are we, are we, are we recommending this? You know, are we telling people that this is one of the ones you should pick up? I think that if I even limited it to, is there a Mike Judge movie you can recommend? I could think of a much better one to recommend. To yeah, be honest, that's, that's, <laughs> that's that's really tough. Yeah, there's a, there's a there's a very obvious one. We're not one of my um, you should know what it is already, listener. One of my friends about wanted to watch this movie and said, "Okay, we don't have time to watch this, but I'm kind of curious about this movie." And we just watched the opening tree. And I said, okay, like this opening monologue here, like this opening story, that's the basic point of the movie. You get it, most of it, from watching the, the very opening scene, at least the idea of it. So you'd give that person that much. You'd say, hey, let's just watch the first like 10 minutes. We'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll understand it at that point getting through. I, I, I totally yeah. get that. I, I think. Yeah. And, and I mean, from there you can, I mean, if, if the, if the movie wants you to think about, you know, um, like different issues, like, okay, like the effects of media on society or mass corporation of items and all that various kinds of things. Like, I think that, you know, you can still talk about those things <laughs> having only watched the first five minutes of it. And maybe that's the difference is we are having this conversation about these topics and we probably haven't had this conversation in a while. So maybe you say, hey, do you remember Idiocracy? Let's not watch it, but let's talk about what they were trying to have us talk about. So you still promote the conversation. Um, yeah, I, I also don't need to watch this again. It's, it's, it's good. I'm glad we went there. No, actually, I'm not. You could have just told me, let's talk about these topics, as I just mentioned. And I would have said, cool. We have a lot of corporations we could talk about that do this stuff today. Yeah, watching this film, you know, it's, again, big positive, that runtime. Good for them. Maybe if it was a short and they took out the super offensive jokes. I will give this movie credit where credit's due. 
unlike some movies I've seen, even recent movies, I can say that Luke Wilson's character actually had somewhat of an arc. It's not a it's not a big arc by any means. He was not he didn't go through any substantial enough events compared to like a drama, for example. But his character did have an arc of being passive and just coasting through his life or whatever to being forced into this essentially a role of responsibility to ending the movie spoilers as the president of the United States. And as far as I can tell the world, because I don't know what's going on with the rest of the world, either they made it out. Okay. And America is, you know, isolated, you know, in all of this, or they're just as bad. And basically America is about the best it's going to get in the world. So maybe he is, you know, this high world leader in all this. I mean, to see that change or whatever, and even, even going into the, the the story concept of he wanted to avoid all that responsibility, being told you're the smartest person on earth and being forced all that responsibility. He actually tried to avoid it and try to run away from it, but he still ended up coming back to it. Now, granted, it's probably because he was being threatened with death and incarceration, but still, he still came back to, you know, do the best he could. So I'll give the story that there was an arc for the main character. And I can't say that for modern mouse related movies so <laughs> maybe he'll go on to work for un after he's the president <laughs> but i mean one of the things i wanted to ask you guys is if you're i mean i i do give the movie a little a, a little bit of credit also f for doing a parody when you have such very like heavy things that you want to say in a in a movie format you know like you want to say okay like let's talk about some of these things that we're doing make us look very dumb like how could we discuss this like okay like you know if we talk about like oh we continually do dumb dumb things we get dumber and dumber and dumber and dumber and okay like let's talk about this and so like I, I find it interesting that the format for this is a parody of a movie to explain these things but I wanted to ask you guys like about, so if you wanted to talk about some of these really heady kind of things like, you know, like, oh, media is bad for you. Consumption is bad for you. Over corporatization is bad. Like, how do you put that in a movie that's entertaining? And it's probably a parody and there might be some different ways to do it, but I, I do give him credit for at least trying to tackle all this kind of stuff. Well, I feel like the way you'd see it in other movies would essentially come more along the lines of it's, it's sci-fi because it tends to be future related. I, I it's hard to escape that. I mean, <clears throat> I, you know what, actually I have a really good example of that. I know okay. a, a, maybe a potentially much more interesting way of doing a lot of what I believe the messaging about corporate culture and a bunch of other stuff. I, I could easily compare this to the Truman show. Truman mm -hmm. show has very equivalent ways of viewing of TV habit. You know, the, the way people watch TV and get engulfed in TV, the way, you know, um, a, a, essentially a corporation can control people's lives and is all encompassing. So there's a lot of kind of stuff in there and it's not a parody. Um, I do think that, if you were to ask me, is there a smarter way of doing this movie? Like if you remade Idiocracy, would could you really change anything and still have the same level of entertainment and potentially, uh, you know, uh, leaving the platform open for conversation? I don't, I, I mean, I, I don't think that I have the creative level to say that there is a much better way of going about it. I would like to think that at the very least there are some, maybe some phrasing that I wouldn't use in said movie if I- That's a sure. kind way of saying that. <laughs> well, I have I have an idea. What if, what if it's like an Outer Limits, Twilight Zone kind of dream scenario where somebody has a dream and in this dream, you know, like basically like the future is just completely terrible. And he says, okay, like how, why is this future so terrible? And then it's just because nobody 
I mean, when bad things were happening, nobody did anything about it. I mean, how does that change the... It, it's almost like you're trying to set it up as if he could wake up from said dream, as opposed to in this one, he's stuck. Right, right, yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of what makes it more of a happier and not such a bleak story. I guess although Twilight Zone is like, oh, the dream was the happy life and the real life is the dark. I, I feel like what I'd say to, to me in terms of, especially if we're, again, comparing when the movie was released nowadays, this movie was meant to start conversations that people weren't necessarily having. And I'd say for today, we are generally in a different place because of the way the internet works now, because of social media that people are having a lot of conversations. And lots of times it is stuff about this. I, th I think people recognize how big corporations have taken over things that used to be very disparate when one company can own several different franchises that are each in and of themselves so large. It's, it is a different time. And it seems more commonplace that these conversations are had. And in light of that, to me, this movie would say, have the conversation so this stuff doesn't happen. And now we're in a place where it's, well, the stuff is happening. We talk about it, and it doesn't change anything. They still get to succeed, and we get marketed to. And now I own five different streaming services because I have to watch that one episode of this one show that's only going to be here for a day that's going to switch over to the other one. Is it? Would it actually be possible? Because, I mean, if, if we look at his other work, which is, I think, a well-regarded cult classic that I would like to believe still holds up well. It has a lot of commentary on corporate culture, mm -hmm. not necessarily how corporate culture affects everyday people, but how it affects the people who works within that world. Mm -hmm. is, is it possible that this movie wasn't so fantastical? Because it feels like this is set to the 11, trying to, I mean, it, it essentially is time travel. You know, it's not the time machine by any means, but it very much is a let's put the main character into a, an extreme version of the future. Um, and then how crazy, almost like Alice in Wonderland, right? How mm -hmm. crazy it can be. Maybe if it was more contemporary, maybe if it took place in a 2006 world where, you know, the maybe even if it had taken place two or three years later with social media, maybe you could have made a commentary piece on you know, commercialism and how people consume it and how it can potentially dumb down people without that fantastical element of the future. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, maybe that makes sense. It sounds like what we're all really landing on is we may not want to watch this particular flavor of this, of this conversation starter again, but we don't mind this topic and it's definitely something that someone could push for. Um, and, you know, maybe maybe if the film didn't use, as you mentioned, the phrasing <laughs> that it did to, to color some of the comedy that they, that they chose to use, uh, you may come back and say, yeah, this is something I would watch again because I like how it, it has us reflect on our society for today. But yeah, I think we're doing a good job at doing that reflection now without this particular film to remind us of it. So any last comments? No, nope. not watching it again. <laughs> that, 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 that is closure, Bobby. Gonna watch it tomorrow. Oh, whoa, this is <laughs> unbelievable change right at the end. So next time we'll make sure he gives us a second review after his second run through <laughs> of it. With this said, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next time. Brought to you by Carl's Jr.